What do you get when you mix a field full of turnips, another field of broccoli, a field of cauliflower, a field of carrots, some Mad Max machinery, and three generations of family farmers? The answer, a culinary adventure on food country. Gerald and Ann Dykerman and their son Eddie are vegetable farmers. Their farm, Brookfield Gardens, grows some of the tastiest vegetables on Prince Edward Island. I, I gotta say, one of my earliest food memories, if not my earliest, is picking carrots in my grandmother's garden. Oh, yeah. You know, and you get a good, fresh, field ripe carrot. Well, it just takes you back. There's just nothing better. The thing about it, when you pick it in the field, it's so crisp, it's so full of life and moisture, and it's just, there's just a hardness to it that you don't get in the supermarket. And the flavor's a whole lot brighter, too. These are great carrots. Mm -hmm. This is one of those fields that you drive by, and you, you know something good's growing in there, but you're not quite sure what it is, because most of us don't see the tops of carrots. By the time they get to the supermarket, they're gone. That's right. Uh, our harvester picks the tops right off, and and uh, and sends them into the wash plant and the, the consumer hardly ever sees the, the tops. You know, I gotta see one of these carrot harvesters. I wanna see how a machine can do a better job at this than I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right? Yeah. It takes a season of sun and rain to grow carrots, a summer's worth of Prince Edward Island perfection. Then, just one day to harvest. The genius in the machinery is not how strong or fast it is, but how gentle. The carrots are eased out of the ground. The tops are cut off and left to fertilize next year's soil. The carrots are gently placed in a truck, all without damaging the crop. Eddie, what's this? Why are these all red? Well, the, the, these carrots have been laying on top of the ground for a few days, and the sun just got at them and uh, turned them red. The really? Sun, that's, the all, that's all it is? Sunburn carrot, eh? Yeah. Does it affect the flavor? Uh, I'm not sure. I never tried to eat one. <laughs> But there are varieties now that uh, taste like dirt. Yeah, tastes like dirt. <laughs> tastes good. No, it, I don't really taste yeah, the difference no, no. to it. Oh, and you, and you can see it's yeah, completely no, orange yeah, inside. Yeah, it's just, you know, at the farmer's market, you'd get a premium for that. Probably would. You know, like <laughs> sunripe carrot sun, or something. Sun-dried. Sun-dried carrot. Yeah, we just invented something new. So we're driving into the carrot field, and we go by the back of this barn, and there's this guy out there with some kind of giant barbecue smoking something. I don't know what he's up to, but let's go check it out. This ought to be interesting. Hey, good morning. What are you smoking away? This big beast. Look at that. How you doing, Michael? I know you. Do you? What's going on? What are you What are you cooking for? Uh, I got bored. I've been cooking for 15 years instead of roasted pig. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. You've never done this before? No. So did you just build this rig just for this? Yeah. Went around, dug around the barn, found what I could use, and bought a pole and trying to hold her together for now. It's, it's nothing but a trial. And what are you going to do with all that meat? Uh, give it to friends. There's probably a pile of people going to show up around 5 o'clock tonight. Of course there are. Yeah. And what's in your uh, secret sauce there, your uh, mop? Caramelized onion and orange barbecue sauce, pretty much. And it really is a mop, eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's the way you do it, right? Yeah. You just sort of mop her on there, yeah. baste it away. You're going to be out here taking care of this thing all day, aren't oh, you? Oh, yeah. All night last night, too. <laughs> you're a dedicated fella. Yeah. This is one of the bonuses. When you're the guy that's sticking around and roasting the pig, you get to eat the good stuff, the crackling, the skin. Mmm. Oh, that's good sauce. Uh, that's a real nice sauce. Yeah, I like it. Jeez, I wish we were sticking around here today. <laughs> that is just super cool that a chef 
on his day off would take the time to get a pig, dig a giant hole in his backyard, stay up all night tending that fire. We don't call it food country for nothing around here. So this is what a broccoli field looks like. This is our broccoli field, one of our broccoli fields. Yeah. I'm not sure I've ever actually seen broccoli growing before. I know I've never grown it in my own garden, and right. I know I've never been in a field, so I think this is one of those fields I drive <laughs> by and think, oh yeah, it's probably food, but I don't know what it is. Right. So w let's talk about, what does it take to grow broccoli? Broccoli takes fairly good land. Uh, a lot of, uh, it, it absorbs a lot of nutrients out of the ground, so we, you do need a, a very, good, very good field to actually grow broccoli in. So we spend a lot, quite a bit of time with proper liming and, 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 and adding compost and manures to the field to actually get it to grow a nice crop of broccoli. Sure. So obviously you're going to rotate something else through here. You're not growing broccoli next year. No, we won't be growing any broccoli in this for probably seven years because because uh, this, this family is called the brassica family, this, this certain crop, and, and it'll build up diseases in the soil. So we, 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 we spread the rotation out to about seven or eight years. Really? Before we put broccoli back in the field. Now, now that kind of makes sense to me. So broccoli is taking so many nutrients out of the soil that you've got to wait seven years before you can plant it again. Yeah. Which is why broccoli is so healthy when we yeah, eat it, right? I would think so. Yeah. Well, let's hope not, so. Yeah. I'm not a scientist, but that's uh, that's the theory behind it. I just I just cook the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so ha when it's harvest time, what do you do? You just you just well, whack we just it kinda, off. And... Yeah. This is all done by hand, but with the hand labor. We we will walk through this field when we think there's enough. Uh, uh, they're, when they're just big enough. And then we just basically come along and we we cut we cut it off about this length, and then we just pick the leaves off, and then that puppy's ready for market. So you're the guy that's picking that giant stem that pisses off so many cooks <laughs> out there. Like, right. what am I going to do with that stem? What do you do with the stem? Well, I, I actually prefer the stem over the floret. When we're cooking them, we, we just either take a usually take a carrot peeler and just kind of, kind of peel the skin off. Uh -huh. You can't eat a broccoli leaf, can you? Is it? Well, I think you could. Yeah. It's not poisonous no, no, or anything no, like that. No, no, it's just oh. the same as, same as the rest of the crop. It just seems I, like the, oh, it's a little bitter. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's a lot bitter, but it's yeah. not bad. No, it would cook up nicely. It, it actually it tastes like the broccoli yeah. flowers. Yeah. Bert and Ann, thanks for having me on the farm today, Eddie. Nice to meet you. It's beautiful broccoli. So now it's time for me to go do my job. It's time to get cooking, and that's on the menu. Okay. Good to know you, folks. Cheers. I've been driving around all day doing a bunch of things, but I can't get that pig out of my head, and I gotta go get some of it. And I know that here on Prince Edward Island, the standard price of admission to any party, you can basically invite yourself as long as you show up with beer. Hey, you got any pig left?